Muskoxen were here during the last two ice ages. They have existed in Alaska for hundreds of thousands of years. They outlived the saber-toothed tigers, the woolly mammoths, and the mastodons out on the tundra. Their name is a complete misnomer. They have no musk and they are not ox. They're just a really unique animal. Their closest relatives are goats. They're essentially an arctic goat. One of the most promising experiments in our northern civilization involves a dedicated man named John Teal, Jr. and 38 musk oxen, those odd creatures that look like hangovers from the Stone Age. Here at the muskox farm, our concept from the very beginning was to create a domesticated muskox. And while that sounds like a rather simple concept, it's not. founder was an anthropologist with a really keen interest in people in the far north and what he wished to do was to bring a geographically appropriate form of agriculture to the far north. He did not want to bring a pig or a chicken or a goat and try to adapt it to Alaska. He wanted to give people the supplemental income opportunity through the Kivu, the underworld of the Muskoxen. We started with 34 animals in 1964 and today we have 85 animals. I would say 85 animals on this property have 85 distinct <laughs> different personalities. Some, they're not having it. They prefer to stay back in the pasture. They don't want to be on camera. They want to be out of the limelight. And then you have others like Iron Man here that are absolutely 100% hams. Like they will come up and see what you're doing. They're curious. They want to say hello. Most of them you can enticed to do pretty much anything with treats. They are very food driven. Their favorites seem to be willow and fireweed. So we actually go around and cut a bunch of fireweed and willow for them. Every single one has a name and there's a theme every year. And so there was a wasabi, now here's mace. And so that was the year of the spices. And so we've got some spice girls and spice boys. The themes are just a really fun way, especially for our visitors. It's not every day when I could see live animals dated back from like the ice age. There's no muskox in the lower 48. So no. there's only, you know, so many left. I just have a lot of respect for how hardy they are to withstand like minus 60 temperature um, and do just fine out here uh, without any kind of, you know, shelter or anything. I did not realize that, that they harvested the wool from underneath. Okay. And it's so soft. Kivyut is magic. Kivyut is, um, it's one of the finest natural fibers. Every year around May, we will comb the kivu off of all of our animals. And what we do is we use this pick, and since they are already shedding, we kind of just reach in and scoop it off them. We're not ripping the hair off the animals, we just scoop it off without it blowing away in the wind out in the pastures. I have the first scarf of Kivyut, woven at the University of Alaska. Like other garments made from this wool, it's so light you scarcely know you have it on, and so warm it's ideal for extremely cold weather. The 
The greatest danger the muskox are facing today is going to be through climate change. It's changing in the Arctic far faster than it is anywhere else in the world. It sounds like an ice age is a pretty rough environment, but they're built for that exactly. What they're not really built for is the unstable environment that we're kind of going through now. And it's going to be really interesting to watch how muskox respond over the next 10, 20 years to this rapidly changing climate. They're truly ice age remnants, and we've been given this gift as human beings to still have them here with us. I think for people to protect the musk ox or to care about them, you first kind of need an experience like this. And if they die off, then the next generation simply wouldn't have the privilege to see them. Well, they're amazing animals. They're a legacy. They've been around for hundreds of thousands of years. They represent an incredible toughness, an incredibly majestic animal that exists in places that people can hardly exist at all.